Another typical method for the for the second player when playing the Brook defense is the exchange sacrifice. We usually, in many cases, we are willing to give up our exchange, our rook, one of the rooks, for the dark squared bishop of the opponent, especially for that piece. Uh, after that, the bishop on g7 is not having any counterpart. And if we manage to grab one or two pawns, this is just perfect. The game that I chose for you to explain this point of view is the game Sokolov with the white pieces, Andrei, against Van der Ville from the Bill um, Tournament 1985. Zonal Tournament, it was played like that, e4, d6, d4, knight, f6. Knight c3, g6, this is also now our move forward. Once again, knight f3 was played here. Bishop g7, bishop e2, short castle, short castle, and now black played c6. After rook e1, he developed his pieces, knight d7, bishop f4, and he came out with the queen on a5. He wants to play e5, he's supporting this advance with the queen from a5. Um, white reacted queen d2, e5, bishop g5, e takes d4, knight takes d4, and now a very interesting tactical skirmish started with the move knight takes e4. If white doesn't want to lose the pawn, he needs to follow the stream, so he takes on e4 himself, queen takes d2, bishop takes d2, and as this pawn on d6 is hanging, Black decided to play d5 and to keep his pawns intact. For the time being, he's postponing taking the knight on d4, and he also intends to sacrifice the exchange after bishop b4, which was the course of the game. As otherwise, if white takes on c6, then b takes c6 is going to lead to advantage for the second player as his pieces are more active. That's also a typical situation in which our bishops on the on the diagonals are working pretty well together with the rook coming on b8 as a support and also this knight can come to help black and also think about advancing that pawn so this didn't happen in the game bishop before was the move and then we are reaching the position that we were talking about after rook d8 knight b5 tricky move and d takes e4 now knight c7 was played rook to b8 more or less black was forced to sacrifice the exchange after the move bishop to e7 but that's not bad at all for the second player he goes rook f8 and counters bishop takes f8 uh, with actually this wasn't played in the game he didn't take on f8 immediately, but he first played the move rook ad1. As uh, white also needs to take care about this knight on c7. So first he did rook ad1, bishop e5, and only now he took on f8. King takes f8, bishop g4, and f5. Just have a look at the position. In order to save the knight, uh, white was forced to improve the pawn chain of his opponent. That beautiful bishop on e5 is controlling everything on the board and black is winning a second pawn in a moment because uh, the move knight e6 is forced king is coming on e7 and knight g5 and now black didn't even care about that piece because then the white rooks are coming back into life. Instead of that he took the pawn on b2 and for the exchange he has already two pawns which is more than enough but also he has a very nice pawn chain very nice pawn structure two bishops especially strong is the one on b2 that game continued i'm sorry instead of taking on b2 he first played knight to f6 to defend everything and only once that the bishop moved away with bishop e2, then he took on b2, and basically this is the position which arises, and with black having two pawns for the exchange. Further on, bishop c4 was played, b5, black is advancing his pawns everywhere, 
bishop f1, then h6, the knight has to go on f3, otherwise it would be stranded if it goes on h3. But now c5 is taking away the good squares from the knight, and it also opens space for the bishop, and black is clearly better. Rook e3 was played, bishop to e6, rook b1, and f4. And the first player found nothing better but to go rook e2, as if the rook is coming on e1, then bishop c3 would be very unpleasant. So he played rook e2, uh, white is losing the knight on f3, he took on e6 and he took on b2, but at the end of the day he was a pawn down and uh, also his pawn structure wasn't really very great, so he went on to lose this after king e5, the king is getting into the opponent's camp. The rest is not that important, I just wanted to show you the idea of sacrificing the exchange for the dark squared bishop and that position with the powerful pawn chain and the bishop which is not obstructed by his own pawns uh, but instead of that is causing damages of the opponent's camp.